Hello and welcome to Tech of the Month, the series which is all about all the cool new tech to arrive at Bike Radar HQ. Today I've got hold of Warren's top swag he's currently got in for testing. From an exotic 3D printed stem to Zip's wildly deep aero wheels to Garmin's cheaper touring specific Garmin. So it's time to make a cup of tea and get comfy. This Mythos Elix stem is the latest product from Metron Advanced Equipment, and it's got to be one of the most expensive and radical looking stems I've ever seen. The founder of Metron, Demetrius, was actually part of the original British Cycling Secret Squirrel team. Yep, that's the internal name given to the development team, which is responsible for bringing marginal gains to Team GB's hugely successful track cycling team. Up until now, however, whilst technically you could still buy Metron products, they've never really been readily commercially available. But Metron looks to change all that with the new Elix stem, which is the first part of what they hope to become a wider range of high performance products. According to Metron, using 3D printing has enabled them to make components that would have been fundamentally impossible using traditional manufacturing methods. What that means is they've had the freedom to really push the boundaries on what something as simple as a stem can actually deliver. And obviously what they've created is something very visually striking too. What's it made out of? Well, apparently it's made out of Scalm alloy, which I'll give a thousand bike radar gold stars to anyone who can work out the three metals this alloy is made from. Okay, it's scandium, aluminium, and magnesium. Why even bother doing this? Well, extensive analysis and simulations on the load paths has enabled engineers to define the areas of the stem which require more or less material. This means they've been able to greatly increase the torsional stiffness of the stem, but without affecting the bending stiffness. So the idea here is better vibration damping, but also class leading stiffness when sprinting hard out the saddle. And I'm gonna be honest and say that with my sprinting prowess, I'm unlikely to truly tell the difference. Mythos claim weights from 150 grams, depending on the length, but this 110 millimeter stem weighs in at 166 grams, and that includes the titanium hardware. What's also quite nice is it's compatible with both external and internal cable systems, including FSA's ACR. So after all that, I'm sure you're probably dying to add this to your basket, but hold on, because there's something which might just make you think twice. As you'd imagine, this stem doesn't come cheap. It will set you back a whopping 500 pounds. Now I'm gonna let that sink in before I come on to Garmin's new Explore GPS. Hot on the heels of Garmin's all new premium screened Edge 1040 that we featured in a previous episode comes the Explore 2. Warren thinks this little powerhouse might just be the smart choice based on a few reasons, the first being the price. While it's not cheap, it's less than half the cost of the 1040 Solar at £249. Secondly, the size. It's a little bit bigger than a diminutive 830, but smaller than the 1040, and the three inch touchscreen is bright and easy to read. The battery reserves are upped to a whopping 24 hours in standard use and Garmin claim that you'll still get around 16 hours life from demanding use. That's if you're using it to navigate, connect to a heart rate monitor, power meter, lights, or any of the other functions available. While the Explore 2 may be a little stripped back on its data, for instance, you don't get some more in-depth power metrics like FTP analysis, you can still connect to a power meter and heart rate monitor, and it will still measure clever stuff like VO2 max and give you things like estimated recovery time after a big ride. Along with added features you didn't get on the older Explore, like a new temperature sensor, it will also control Garmin's new Avaria radar camera. Finally, a move to USB-C connections for charging means you might be another step away from binning that final micro USB cable you have lying around the house. If you're after a training tool with all the deep dive stats and data on offer, you're still better off with an Edge rather than an Explore. But if you just want to record your rides, and follow routes, then the Explore 2 is one of the best around. Thinking of buying a new GPS computer? Why not watch our Wahoo vs Garmin range overview video? Links in the description or the card above. But what's your favourite GPS? Let me know in the comments. 
Zips 858 NSW is the brand's latest evolution of its deepest aerodynamic wheel. And these are seriously deep. In fact, they're between 82 and 85 millimeters, but they're not all about aerodynamics which I'll go into in a minute. The new wheel design still has that unique sawtooth shape, which is actually inspired by the tubercles of a humpback whale's pectoral fins. I love seeing new technology come from the animal kingdom, so if you can think of any more in the cycling industry, let me know. Zip claims this design offers a much cleaner airflow and therefore faster wheel, although unfortunately we don't have the equipment to test this ourselves. Having said that though, the latest iteration is more than just aerodynamics, according to Zip. The new rim is wider, 23 millimeters internally in fact, and it's tubeless and hookless. On paper, the new wheel is unimpressively just a single watt more aerodynamic, according to Zip, but it gains more when you look at the wheel performance as a whole. These elements consist of wind resistance, gravity, rolling resistance, and vibration losses. To combat gravity, Zip have a new rim structure called Carbon Internal Reinforcement. Think of it as a skeleton on the inside of the rim that allows Zip to reduce the amount of material used by putting strength where it's needed and removing excess material where it's not. The result is a weight reduction of 282 grams over the old model. Overall weight for the pair is an impressive 1530 grams. The CIR design also tackles vibration losses as the rim's construction allows for a little bit of shock absorption. Rolling resistance is said to be reduced too, due to the hookless rim shape by making the contact patch wider and shorter. So according to Zip, the new 858 NSW is lighter, faster and more comfortable. Any surprises? But here's something which will surprise you. It's actually cheaper, to the tune of £620 or US$240 from the previous model. But hold on, these are still not cheap. They come in at a staggering £3,570 or US$4,642 for the pair. But what do you think? Would you like to see a full video review from Warren? And don't forget to let us know what cheaper products you'd like to see in next month's edition. This month I have ASOS's first foray into gravel specific clothing. Coming under the umbrella of its Millet Endurance line, the range is designed for pure comfort rather than being aerodynamic or lightweight. At the moment there are three pieces in the range, a jersey, cargo bib shorts and overshorts. Let's kick things off with the jersey. The Millet GTC Jersey C2 combines elements of the brand's road and mountain biking clothing. The brand says it took durable, lightweight and breathable fabric from its trail collection to keep up with the rigours of bikepacking. It features a quarter zip and the fit is baggier than the brand's road clothing, but tighter fitting than a mountain bike tee. The jersey eschews the three traditional road jersey pockets and instead features a security pocket to the left side of your back. ASOS has used a softer collar and cuff material and the triangle textile is borrowed from its trail jerseys. It's available in two colours, Torpedo Grey and Schwarzhold Green, the latter of which I have here in front of me. Okay, now let's take a look at the bib shorts. The Millet GTC Kia Spanza C2, that was a mouthful, is a cargo bib short with four pockets, two on the thighs and two on the rear. The pockets are said to be high stretch, extremely breathable free mesh panels and the two rear ones use green pull tabs so you can grab supplies fuss free while riding. The leg storage pockets is mesh folds in on itself at the top meaning anything inside stays secure. ASOS's tried and tested C2 pad is fitted with a 19mm gravel specific insert which the brand says absorbs vibrations on rough and choppy terrain. Mesh-like bunny hop side panels are said to protect against abrasion while maintaining breathability. The panels are also claimed to further compress your leg muscles, reducing fatigue. Reflective stripes help ensure visibility and the shorts feature a silicon leg gripper. The shorts use ASOS's X-frame bib straps to hold everything in place. Okay, we're done with those. Rounding out the collection is the ASOS Millet GTC Zeppelin Cargo Short C2. Although ASOS calls them a cargo short, I'd define them as a baggy short and the Kia Spanza as a cargo short. ASOS says it has taken many of the design features found in its mountain bike trail cargo shorts in the development of the Zeppelin. 
ASOS says it's five centimetres shorter than the trail shorts with a slimmer leg opening that can be zipped open to the same width. Two deep pockets feature on either side as do reflective strips down the outer thighs to keep you visible if you get caught out in the dark. The fit is decidedly more close fitting over the mountain bike shorts to reduce flapping or bunching. ASOS says you can layer the short over its specific trail liner shorts or over thermal tights for additional protection against the elements or road spray. All of the kit in the collection is available from sizes extra small to TIR. How much does all this kit cost? Well, ASOS is typically a high performance brand and thus the prices don't come cheap. The jersey will retail for £110 or $160. The Kia Spans and Bib Shorts are more costly at £210 or $270 and the Zeppelin shorts retail for £140 or $190. What do you think of ASOS's first gravel collection? Do you think the brand has nailed the design on its first attempt? Should we even have specific gravel clothing? Let us know in the comments. So we are very lucky today to be joined by a very special new bike. Now, it's from Kadex and we're lucky to be joined by Dave Ward, product manager at Kadex, who's going to tell us a little bit about it. So, Dave, what are we looking at? This is the brand new Kadex Tri-Frame and this is an out-and-out -out bike built specifically for 70.3 and full-length Ironman distances. Okay, so let's run you through the top five features of the Kadex Tri-Bike. So why have you gone for this frame shape? What's so good about this unique frame shape that makes it perfect for triathlon? The beauty of this being specific for triathlon 70.3 Ironman is that we don't have to keep the UCI happy. A big thing was we wanted to integrate a bento box and a hydration system in. Um, so having this deep down tube and no top tube to get in the way has enabled us to be able to do that, which helps with what we call endurance aero. And endurance aero is all about keeping the rider in that low profile aero position as long as possible without having to reach around for bottles or go scrabbling in a back pocket for a, uh, for a gel. So your gels or your bars are in the bento box here and the hydration system is here and then goes through to a flexible straw here. So like I say, keeping the rider in that position as long as possible for real world aerodynamics. So a big feature of this new bike is all about personalized fit. And that means basically making sure you can get your optimum position on the bike. So tell us how you've achieved that with the Kadex Tri-Bike. First of all, the frame set comes in five different sizes from extra, extra small all the way through to a large. So it's going to fit a vast range of rider heights, which is perfect. Um, from a seat tube point of view, we've got two effective seat tube angles. Uh, so this section here is reversible and you can be in a position to give you the 76 or an 80 degree seat angle. On the front end, from an adjustment point of view, the level of adjustment here is like on no other bike. Uh, so, so the adjustment you've got fore and aft uh, with the different widths on the armrests as well, the different combinations of positions you can put it in, and then a big thing is the stack positions. So what you can do is we can run up to 80 millimeters of stack in 10 millimeter increments. And the base bar here in two pieces can be run at either zero, plus 10, plus 20, plus 30, or 40 millimeter height. So really you've got so much adjustment here. And then as well as the height adjustment, you've also got angle adjustment as well. So you can run it at four different angles. So you can run it at zero, five degrees, 10 degrees, or 15 degrees, and everything that you need to be able to do that is all included. Right, so let's talk about the aerodynamics of the frame set. Now obviously it's got a pretty radical wide fork design and of course this, you know, monocoque frame set. Tell us a bit about the aerodynamics of the bike and how they've been designed to work in the real world. Over a long period of time. This is about a two and a half to three year project. So like you say, it's a big wide open fork design to let as much airflow through as you can possibly get. Nice touches, the fork blades are perfectly in line with the uprights between the seat stay and the chain stay to work very well from an aerodynamic point of view. All of the tube profiles, obviously very, very aerodynamic. Um, it's an incredibly fast bike. Uh, so um, we've done this through hundreds and hundreds of iterations through CFD, so computational fluid dynamics, and that's effectively like having a, a wind tunnel on your laptop. So we get it to a certain stage with CFD, and then we take it into the wind tunnel. Um, and then of course it's tested in the real world, because sometimes something that works in the wind tunnel just doesn't ride well when you get it out on the road. And all of your kind of CFD and wind tunnel testing is using you know, riders on bikes or dummies on bikes, and then obviously, you know, 
real riders in the wind tunnels as well, right? So you're not just kind of testing, you know, a bike on its own and not taking yeah. into account that the added drag from the rider. No, ab ab absolutely. If you just stick a bike in a wind tunnel, you're going to get fake figures because obviously the rider is there and the rider creates a lot more drag than the, than the bike itself does. Let's talk about just how much storage space there is in this massive down tube. Now it's quite hard to see, obviously. We can see a couple of ports here, but what's actually going on inside of the frame? There's three things in here. So just on the other side here, there is a toolbox. Um, uh, which clicks into place very securely so you can run gas canister, tire levers, an inner tube CO2 canister uh, in there. In this section here there's a bladder uh, and the size of the bladder, the capacity of the bladder varies depending on the size of the bike. So the minimum capacity is 600 millilitres and then the maximum is a full litre. You've then got the bento box, again this varies in size depending on the size of the frame and this will take either between uh, a minimum of six and a maximum of ten gels. So what considerations have you made for travelling with this bike? A big part of the design process is designing this so you don't have to be a proto mechanic to either take it apart and put it in a bike box and certainly when you get to the hotel before a couple of nights before you're doing the Ironman you don't need to be a proto mechanic to put it back together. First of all the, bike, the frame set comes with its own storage case uh, so it's made by Topeak and that is included in the price and when we ship the frame it's actually in that box. The big nightmare for uh, low pro bikes for traveling has always been what's going on on the front end. So what what we've done is we've designed it so all of these spaces have a split in them so once you've taken the armrests off you undo the bolts at the top and then you can take the spaces out the base bar is in two pieces so this piece here is completely separate from this piece here so really really easy i know we've just given you top five things but let's talk about a couple more details because this bike is absolutely packed with cool things now, this is a new wheel set right this is a disc wheel and a four spoke these are disc brake wheels though and that's new for kdex isn't it so we've kept the profile on the back end that we had with the rim brake version because we know that it works it's a completely hollow rear wheel so there's no there's no foam in there from a manufacturing point of view it makes an awesome noise as well keeps the weight down as well. So very, very high tech, hookless uh, specific, so tubeless only, 22.4 uh, uh, internal width. And on this frame, just for reference, this will take up to a 28C tire. On the front wheel, it's four spoke, tried and tested from the rim brake version. So we've kept exactly the same profiles, but we have made the rim that little bit wider. Internally, it's still 22.4, but we've gone a little bit wider and hookless. And that extra width is purely there from an aerodynamic point of view. Now you've just mentioned that awesome sound. Shall we do a little free hub sound check? Go for it. So if there are any budding triathletes out there with a wad of cash burning a hole in their pocket, when will these be available to buy? Uh, frame set is available before the end of the year. All three wheel options will also be available uh, by the end of the year. And if you keep an eye on the Kdex website, there'll be some information soon on a pre-order on the frame sets. Great, thanks very much. And if you want even more juicy details on this new bike, head over to bikeray.com via the link in the description below. So that's it for this month's episode. We hope you enjoyed it. And as ever, if you have any thoughts, comments, what you'd like to see next month, get them in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so every time we upload a video, you get a notification.